Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Centennial Conference Corner. My name is Amber Thomas, and I'm virtually alongside Alicia Long, senior volleyball player for Muhlenberg College. How are you doing today, Alicia? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, so you got the opportunity to be part of an amazing uh, program, the Division Three Student Immersion uh, Program. You got the opportunity to have a mentor, uh, talk to some industry leaders, uh, do some programming at national convention. Uh, with it being a virtual experience this year, uh, can you talk a little bit about what you all did? Yeah, so... Um... It was really, really cool. It was such an eye-opening experience and definitely life-changing. I loved being a part of the program. Um, so what we kind of did is we just were on Zoom, which was sad because like getting to know everybody, you wanted to meet them in person. So like it was really sad that it was on Zoom and um, online this year. But I think um, for how everything is going right now, it was definitely one of the best things that could have happened. Um, because everyone was so open and honest in the whole thing. Um, so what we did is we kind of just had our opening session. We got to meet everybody, got to talk with everybody. Um, and then we got to have different sessions with like, we had a session for networking, a session for how to have candid conversations just about like all the things in society that has to offer. Um, we had conversations about ourselves and a thing called DISC, which is how you like develop like who you are as a person. Like it just gives you like, all these things about yourself that you really wouldn't know even when you're trying to do like deep reflection which I thought was really really cool um there was just a bunch of different sessions that brought so many like different thoughts to my head so it was really really interesting yeah one of my favorite parts of convention is the different like educational sessions uh what was your favorite part of your whole experience uh so that's so hard because I love the whole <laughs> thing it was just such a fun experience um but for me I'd have to say my favorite was probably either the disc I was so big on that one I loved it because it was just like how everyone interacts with each other and being a sociology major like that's what I study so like it was really cool being able to hear like why people act the way that they do based off the personality type that they have um, and then another really interesting one was the candid conversations, which was just pretty much talking about like the eight, the great eight like pillars of society. So like race, gender, religion, like sexuality, all that stuff. And I thought that that was so cool just because like you don't really talk about that on a daily basis with people that you're around. Um, so just like being able to talk about that in depth and like have small groups and learning about each other like on a deeper level like I think things for me like the deeper things go for me the more I get out of it so those were pretty much the two sessions that I will remember forever. That's great so you've had this experience at NCA convention you've been doing already the work at your campus and in your athletic department what's next? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations yeah. around the corner. What's I know, happening? yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm hoping that I will find a job in athletics. Fingers crossed. It's what I'm hoping for. Um, I have a deep love for athletics. I always have since I was little watching it. Um, and I guess like since I've been a manager at my school and just being able to get to know all the people in my athletic department, I have found a deeper love and appreciation for what goes on behind the scenes for athletics so just being able to find a job doing something that I know I love um, I know it's probably going to take a little bit to find exactly what I feel like my role at a school could be um, and what my passion is for my life um, but I know that I want to try to help college students college athletes more in particularly um, feel like they found a safe space for them like my college athletic department did for me so that's something that I'm really hoping I'll find <laughs> around the corner. Well, you have some time to not putting the pressure on you. I hope so. You have time. <laughs> so we always like to leave a little bit of room at the end, to get a little deeper into uh, knowing you a little better. So we usually do rapid fire questions, but since it is Black History Month, we're going to switch it up a little bit. Um, what does Black History Month mean to you? Yeah, um, I love that question because 
obviously being a black woman um it's been really hard just like growing up with different like my mom is white my dad is black like I'm I'm mixed and my mom's also Puerto Rican so like I have a bunch in me um and um just growing up in different ways like I was born in Pennsylvania so like there was a lot of more there's more people that looked like me that I could relate to but when I was in sixth grade I moved to Tennessee where there wasn't really a lot of people that looked like me around me um and so I guess just like my journey with my blackness and finding who I am and um like living in my skin every single day especially today like now and what's been going on the past six months, the past year, like honestly forever since the start of time. Um, it is, it's definitely nothing that I would ever change about myself. And I know like a lot of people feel the same way. And I'd like to hope that all people that are in black bodies feel the same way that I do, that they would never change anything about them. So, um, just having this month, which is so sad that we just have a month to appreciate Black culture, um, just, I guess, having this month to actually, like, show everyone and have everyone, like, actually have knowledge in what it means to be Black and Black culture and what, how it's been throughout society. It's like, I think it's really cool. For sure. And like you said, Black history is American history. It definitely should be exactly. ingrained. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so we usually have like historic figures, but do you have any personal figures that have helped influence you and get to, get you to where you are now? Yeah, so obviously I've had so many people in my lifetime trying to help guide me into the person that I've become. Um, but one person in particular stands out and her name is Roberta Meek and she was one of my professors my freshman year of college. Um, so we have this thing at school called an FYS and it's your first year seminar. It's to help transition you into college life and pretty much what you do. Um, and my freshman year, I had the pleasure of joining this group called the Emerging Leaders Program, which is pretty much for minorities to have a space on campus that people who look like them and who were like them and have the same experiences as them um, be in a group. And so those are like the emerging leaders. We were split into two two classes for our FYS and I got to be with Roberta Meek and I was learning about Michael Jackson actually. It was a really interesting class. It was called Imagining Michael Jackson and it was really, really cool because she was obsessed with him. Like she's probably still this, to, to this day, she's obsessed with Michael Jackson. Like she loves him. She will tell you all about him. Um, but just like having a professor that looked like me in a space where I could freely talk about my experiences and we were learning about someone that I grew up listening to, it was just so cool. And so like, I felt like whenever I had meetings with her, I could open up to her about the struggles that I was feeling my freshman year, like the anxiety of being a freshman student, but being a freshman athlete too. Like it was just so much to deal with at that time. And just having someone who went through so much struggle and so much pain in her life, just being able to get to the place that she is, and being able to make an impact on people's lives before me and even after me, but like specifically being able to be there for me and help me through my college process has been nothing short of amazing. Um, so she is probably someone that I look to to this day, even if she doesn't know it. Um, she's someone that I definitely do admire. Um, and I was so sad when I finally like decided that I was gonna declare my sociology major because that means that I was dropping her as my my advisor because before you declare, she was my advisor. And so when I declared, she was no longer that. And I was like, what am I gonna do without my, my meetings with her? Um, but she still has been a person that I look to and am gonna miss with when I graduate. Yeah, representation definitely matters. Uh, do you have any quotes from her that have like stuck with you or any like uh, empowering words that, you know, stick with you to this day? Just that she always tells us to be relentless. Like she, I don't know how many times she said it, but like being a freshman, it's so hard. Like you're coming from being like a senior on, in high school, like big dong on campus. And you're coming into this place where you're just like, you're going through a new phase of life and you don't really know what to expect. 
so she kind of always just told us to be relentless and to work hard and that kind of stuck with me just because it's what I hear in the athletic world and at home like just you got to be relentless and you got to work for what you want and hearing that in an academic setting was something that I think will stick with me for a long time too. Absolutely now to stick with me and everyone out there be relentless. Be <laughs> relentless guys. Well I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to meet with me Alicia and everyone, you can catch a new episode of the Centennial Conference Corner each week at centennial.org or on social media at Centennial Conf. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.